So let me give you the rundown on my perspective of what happened with the A-bomb. My perspective from my own research, my opinion, is that we built the A-bomb in the 40s, right? We dropped it on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. After that, we were developing the H-bomb, hydrogen bomb, fusion bomb. Hydrogen bomb's a fusion bomb, not a fission bomb, but a fusion bomb. And we figured out from the fusion bomb how to manipulate space time, or at least the concept of manipulating space time. We probably already knew about it theoretically before then, but that was the point where we hit energy densities, energy requirements that are actually needed to really manipulate space time. That's my opinion on what happened. And if I'm right about this, then a neutronic fusion. And somebody just pointed the, the ether bomb is a good way to put it. A neutronic fusion would be the secret to this. Why? Because a neutronic fusion is taking out the neutrons from your fusion reaction. Remove your neutrons from your fusion reaction. Now you're left with pure energy. And pure electricity, pure energy is what we would need to be more efficient in order to actually manipulate space time. We have to, we basically, in order to manipulate space time, we have to get these huge energy requirements. But we also have to be super efficient. It needs to be super efficient. So what I've been looking for when it comes to fusion, a neutronic fusion companies, which ones are the a neutronic ones that are working on fusion energy with minimal to no neutrons? And the two that I found, I mean, there may be more than two. Commonwealth is kind of, I'm kind of wondering what Commonwealth is really doing if they're just not telling the truth. But the two major ones are Tri-Alpha Energy and Helium Fusion. I want to take a quick look at Tri-Alpha Energy. We actually haven't looked at Tri-Alpha Energy very much. But this right here is a flipbook. E executive summary. The field reverse configuration. A promising path to a neutronic fusion. 2024. This is last year. Now, keep in mind. These people figured out a neutronic fusion a long, long time ago. So if I'm correct, then we figured it out in like the 60s, in the 60s. And so for somebody to post this and be like, hey, here's the path to a neutronic fusion in 2024. We're about 60 years too late, right? About 62 years too late. Anyway, let's take a look at it. So about Tri-Alpha Energy, founded in 1998. In Irvine, California, more than 400 employees globally. So pretty small, pretty small company. As with the space race, fusion is the genesis, a number of pillars of technological innovation. Tr energy transportation and storage, uh, clean fusion, cellular radiation therapy. Can't wait, what? Wait, what? Cancer treatment? You guys see that on the right? I, I did not expect to read cancer treatment on here as well. So they're actually, we can use a neutronic fusion for cancer treatment. Hidden Yahtzee chat, secret Yahtzee, I totally did not expect. I totally did not expect. Somebody in the chat saying they used to work here in IT. That's funny. Executive summary. The field reverse configuration is ideally suited to burn a neutronic fuels. Now, once again, people have been saying, Ashton, why have you not been talking about plasmoids? I am talking about plasmoids. Field reverse configuration is plasmoid. <laughs> They've just renamed these, these uh, things, and they keep renaming them over time, the same way that they got rid of cold fusion, and then they started calling it low-energy nuclear reactions, lattice confinement fusion. And now a neutronic fusion is somewhere between hot fusion and cold fusion, where it's really cool fusion, cool fusion. Norman holds a field reverse configuration plasma in an easily accessible linear device. So they, they shoot these plasmas on either end, and then they kind of mix together and combine and form this weird shape in the middle. And then they have these neutral beam injectors, neutron beam injectors, neutral beam injectors that like keep it spinning, keep it going. Now, the thing about it, though, is that it, it produces these axial jets. Like the plasma, it has exhaust, it's trying to escape. And this is what makes it useful for propulsion, for propulsion. So field reverse configuration plasmas actually began with propulsion technology in the 90s. I mean, maybe, maybe it goes further than that, but from the public perspective. Now look at this on the right here. 
I'm going to make this bigger for a second. Take a look at this on the right. This says, starting fusion with the end in mind. What features would we like from an ideal fusion reaction? Low temperatures, aka cool fusion, guys. High reactivity, benign products, reactants are benign, re reactants are abundant, and no neutron yield. Exactly what I've been saying. No waste, no weapon proliferation. So what they're saying here is with me, no radiation. It's not going to be like a, you know, melt your face off. And this is why the dumb, stupid, hot fusion people that are basically like the equivalent of the, the Candace and Owens flat earthers of the fusion community, they're like, how can someone be near one of these reactors? It's going to be super radiate. It's going to radiate you and blah, 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 turn you into a mutant from fallout or whatever. No, it's not. Like literally the whole point of it is that it's non-radioactive. That's what it's not releasing any neutrons. And then look on the right here. The first one, we've now, if you've been watching me, you are now experts. If you've been watching me, you're now experts on aneutronic fusion. You should know there's three aneutronic fusion fuels. One, helium-3. Helium-3 is one of them. Two, boron-11. Boron-11 is number two. And number three is lithium-6. That's it. We've found no other a neutronic fusion fuels, just those three. The first one, the I mean, obviously lithium is very interesting because it's related to MH370. And yeah, maybe lithium six and lithium seven can both possibly qual uh, qualify. Helium three is interesting because they've been talking about mining helium three on the moon. And helium three is super rare on Earth. So that I just find that to be really interesting. So in here, it says the first one is helium-3. Actually, no, this is a deuterium-tritium reaction that produces helium-4 is the first one right at the, the, that. And then at the bottom here, it says PB-11 fusion is the end goal of tri-alpha energy, which is actually boron-11 plus a proton that produces helium-4 and some extra energy. And when I was talking to Bob Greenier about this, he's like, well, what do you think helium-4 is? He's like, it's basically just air. It's basically just air. I mean, you release some helium-4, just, you know, basically the equivalent of just releasing some gas into the air. So boron-11 is the end product goal. And the reason why boron-11 is so significant is because it's abundant everywhere. So the whole problem of helium-3 on the moon goes away. That goes away. So this is the future. You guys, this is the future right here. If you're somebody interested in energy production, investing in energy production, it's going to be boron-11, a neutronic fusion. All the other fusion is going to be garbage. It's going to be garbage. I mean, it might work, but it's going to be garbage compared to boron-11 fusion, which is, the, which is the goal. Okay. It says boron-11, reactivity is super high. I'm going to skip. I'm going to kind of go a little faster through this. Boron-11 in a magnetically confined plasma. Now, keep in mind, this is also what Lockheed Martin was doing as well. Lockheed Martin never said what their fusion source was. I can't at least find any sources for it, but they did use a field reverse configuration. We know because they talked about high beta value. High beta value is one of the uh, consistent uh, properties of a field reverse configuration. So Lockheed Martin was working on this same thing. Now, look at this bottom right, config this, this right image there. This looks extremely similar to what we expect the object inside the MH370 orbs to look like. A series of rings. You can see this series of rings. And the Lockheed Martin combat fusion reactors, but basically a series of rings that like different shapes as they go and they kind of elongate. So we can see that that's what their the field reverse configuration is meant to look like. And it even says field reverse, reverse configurations are super diamagnetic devices. Average beta is 90% or higher, nearly 100% beta value. And this is the real secret for why field reverse configurations can work. From pulsed operation to steady state. 
So field reverse configurations for many years were inherently pulse devices. TAE has developed technology to run a, a field reverse configuration in a steady state. So what they're saying is previously we could only pulse these to make them work. But now we figured out a way where we can keep it continuously running. We can have it continuously run as opposed to like, oh, just shoot it together. And then it creates a little bit of energy. But now we've got a way where we can just like get it. And then we've got our plasmoid and it's just going right like the miniature sun, basically. Yeah, and there it is. Neutral beam injectors, NBI injectors. Uh, and then you can see their device here as well. Okay. Now, I think that's good enough on this. So here's the animation uh, from Tri-Alpha Energy that we've got on the screen here. You guys can find this online, this, this image of Tri-Alpha Energy. And it's basically showing their elongated uh, fusion reactor. And it shoots the plasmoid from either end. And then it meets in the middle and the plasmoids hit each other in the middle. They form this blob, almost like a tube. You can like see through this tube and it just starts to spin and it spins. And what they do is they inject, they have these injectors then. So it's, it forms a blob, starts to spin, and then these injectors start to add to it to keep it, to keep it stabilized. And you can see it. So in this image here, they're showing these injectors and it basically looks like little jets that are making it, forcing this uh, plasmoid to spin around. So it's basically just a tube. And once the injector stopped and the plasmoid dissipates and disappears. How crazy is that? This is like, you're just, you're just seeing it right here on your screen. That's it. And now if you want to wonder, okay, how are the MH370 orbs working? Basically what they figured out is they figured out a way to stabilize the plasmoid, potentially even without the neutral beam injectors, or it's a device within a compact fusion reactor that has those built into it. One of the two. I suspect they just figured out how to do it where they can spin this up and now this ball plasma can just move around wherever they want and it stays stable for a significant period of time. 